This week's episode is about the reverse check valve. I run a Penductor assembly into my display tank, and with it, I can't run anti-siphon holes. I discovered it the hard way because I drilled some holes, and it made the sand bed move 24 inches away. So, uh, this time I used a reverse check valve. That's it right there. I had some foam that I put around it to block algae from growing in it, and it's part of a full assembly, it's above the water level, and points down into the tank if water were to sputter out. This whole assembly can be removed by the union for cleaning if necessary. This is a check valve, and you can see there's an arrow right here that points to the direction the water would flow, so water normally goes through here, opens the valve, and sends water through. But I'm going to use it backwards where water will actually go this way and force it shut. And this is how I use it on my system. So I have this little elbow in here to help direct the water downward in the event any water were to sputter past it. And now it's ready to install. The installation is quite easy. There's a threaded piece of PVC sticking out of the assembly and with some Teflon tape first, I simply screw it on into place and make sure that that elbow is pointing straight downward. I've only had to take it off once in the entire year for cleaning, and even then it was just because it looked dirty. Next, I turn off the switch, and boom, it instantly breaks the siphon. Here, listen. When the power is restored to the pump, you'll see water bubbling up strongly from the air shooting out of the conductors, and the check valve fills up with a little bit of water, but it's completely sealed shut and no water came out. Let's watch it one more time. So while no water is back siphoning into the sump, there is still water draining from the display. All the water that's above the level of the teeth at the overflow end will still flow out, which in my case is only a few gallons and raises the water in the sump about maybe one inch. Let's take a look at this one last time from the perspective of the reef itself to see how it responds to the check valve. In case you're wondering how often I actually turn off the return pump, I used to do it every single night when I fed the tank, but I've gotten a little bit lazy. Now I just do it when it's necessary, or if the power goes out and I'm not even near the tank, that siphon is broken. Uh, you can see that it does blow a lot of air into the tank initially to the first, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And of course the corals are getting hit with some air bubbles, but that's not going to hurt them. And once all of it's forced out of the plumbing, you won't see any more bubbles at all in the tank, and the water is very clear. Now uh, we're going to take a look at what's happening down in the sump as well for just a few seconds and then wrap this up. As you can see, the skimmer is on the right side of the video and on the left is the return zone. And the skimmer is refilling with water right now. I had it turned off to have one less noisy thing going on during this video. I would like to point out that if your skimmer is sitting in a lot of water during a power outage, when you turn the power back on, your skimmer could overflow, so it's good to have the skimmer elevated to the correct height where it can handle that extra inch of water. For additional information, check the description of this video to a link to my blog describing the entire build assembly. And thank you for subscribing to this channel. See you in a week.